there is a new category of supplements coming onto the market, ones aimed at maintaining and supporting the proper functioning of the vitreous body. The manufacturer, VivaCuity, partnered with Optometry Today to discuss the science and benefits of the supplement. They gathered optometrists and vision scientists to showcase the benefits of VitroCap N. To start with, it's important to recognise the impact that vitreous floaters can have on your patient's quality of life. We shouldn't look at the presence of floaters of, of just a nuisance. They're not just this bothersome um, opacities in the way of the patient's vision. There's something that greatly affects uh, visual function. And therefore, eye care must be alerted and attentive to finding ways to try and reduce that burden. One thing I do in every single patient that comes in with photos, and, and also just people in general, is I put up a low contrast chart. And people are amazed they can't see the bottom line right away eh, with photos and you show them it on the screen. And that's a bit of a game changer for them because they then say, well, that's why it's so, so bad for night driving. There are surgical treatments available, one of which is vitrectomy. But as the panel discuss, there are problems with this treatment modality. I performed in hospital uh, vitrectomy. I uh, performed yak laser floaterectomy too. So I know all the methods and I know the risks quite well. I was very unhappy with these methods resulting in those high percentages of uh, side effects we get from both of them. You've got a, a real increased risk of getting a, a, a spike in pressure just afterwards. That can give you a, a vein occlusion. You've got 2% renal detachment. You've got 5% cystoid matter edema. Really, vitrectomies was always looked at as a bit of a, a sledgehammer approach. And as a couple of patients got it done because they were so, their quality of life was so poor, they say, I'll take the risk. What I was fascinated to learn from them, these surgeons, they said that out of all the surgery they do and have done in their life, when they perform surgery for patients suffering with vitreous floaters. It's the one surgery that gives the patient the most satisfaction. Waiting for the vitreous jelly to shrink and allowing the floaters to drop below the line of sight also has some considerations. That could take some time for the jelly to shrink and drop out of the way for the vitreous to shrink. So, so there, there's a possible delay in, in, in helping a person improve their quality of life. But again, I read in one of the papers that that even when it does drop out of the way, uh, out of the line of sight, because the eye is constantly moving, uh, all this stuff gets swirled back up again. So it will come back into the line of sight. And even for, I think for those patients where the, the jelly has shrunk and it's dropped out of the line of sight, I think there's still room for, for some management because the floaters will be coming into their line of sight, you know, you know, many, many, many times um, a day. VivaCuity contacted the group Professor John Nolan is associated with to perform a randomised control intervention trial looking into the efficacy of treating vitreous floaters. They built upon four other studies looking into this. They screened 343 patients to end up with 61 in the intervention arm, all of whom had high-end issues with visual function because of the presence of their vitreous floaters. One of the first steps in the study was quantifying in an objective manner the number of floaters each participant had. So we did that in three main ways. In the first instance, it was related to the subjective piece and working with um, a qualified statistician, we were able to develop a questionnaire customized and specific to assessing uh, the impact of floaters on daily life, but also over the previous six months. And that's really valuable data to be able to do that. But on its own, probably would be questionable in the absence of having functional data. So we additionally added to the protocol our, and our knowledge on contrast sensitivity allowed us made those type of measures of visual function key to the research question. But the final piece and probably the most innovative piece of what we were able to do was to actually have an objective quantification of the floaters. So we collaborated with Heidelberg Engineering. We came up with a way to actually quantify with, with a lot of accuracy and repeatability um, the actual size of the floater. So now we had three ways to assess the problem and detect the change in the problem, if any. And we ran what's called a placebo control trial, which is your gold standard design, meaning 50% of the participants were given the the, the active intervention in vitrocap and 50% were given placebo. And to make a long story short, looking at the data at six months, which was conducted um, by an independent statistician, we saw very clearly 
a significant benefit in all those main measures, the subjective piece, how they felt in their daily life, that now floaters were less of a problem and certainly not getting worse compared to the, to the placebo group. And that was beautifully correlated and mapped out with the um, functional measures. So their contrast sensitivity, for example, and to the objective measures. In basic principles, we were able to reduce um, the size of the floater by on average 20%, but in up to 70% of the patients recruited uh, into the trial. The conclusion from the flies as now published is that there was about a 70% success rate, and that is really meaningful to those patients in terms of their vision-related quality of life and other measures of visual function. So absolutely something to embrace now. Really in a wonderful situation now, having this very good study, uh, controlled study, uh, for the discussion with our patients. And we have had some other studies before, not controlled studies, but for others, and all were in the, about the same success rate, 70 to 80%. So this is interesting. And we have this in mind. So it's not just the effect of one study only, but uh, of a whole series of five studies in the whole. I think this gives us a very safe basis for our discussion with the patients. What is in vitrocap N? So the vitrocap N is, is, is the combination of, of, of the micronutrients that um, are available. They're water soluble. They can, they, vitamin C, for example, is, is a main component of it. There's grapeseed extract. So basically a combination of antioxidant, anti-glycation and enzymatic micronutrients that are safe for consumption. When we look at these micronutrients, I think their value is not in their individual activities. It's in the biological synergy effects that they can provide. Um, and, it, you know, there has been a lot of work done by um, Abiga Vision um, to make sure that they source um, formulation ingredients for the formulation that are highest standard, that are stable and that are of quality. And, um, you know, this is something very important to us in, in Waterford when we conduct research. Or if we put ourselves forward like we're doing now, saying to a doctor with respect, we think this is useful for your patients because it's only useful if it's of quality and if the micronutrients that are claimed on the label are present. And a big vision, the company that are responsible for distributing this, take that very seriously too. And that's why we're very, very comfortable, um, you know, collaborating and supporting with this type of education. With Vitrocap N now on the market, what does this mean for optometry? It makes perfect sense to me that the maintenance of, of the vitreous body throughout our life with best effort will, will allow it to deliver what the vitreous body is supposed to do, which is provide that support to our neurosensory retina. Optometrists I speak to sometimes say, I'm not a salesperson, I'm not selling tablets, I'm not selling glasses, I'm, I'm a clinician, you know, I, I'm a healthcare clinician. But it, we need to try and get beyond that uh, and and focus on the quality of life. Uh, and we need to convince optometrists that it's the right thing to do, to be talking to their patients about this and recommending um, vitro caps. You have a very easy experiment every time a patient uh, makes the decision following the information you give them to try this if they so want to. Because if it doesn't work, they'll stop doing it. And But what we're seeing is that's absolutely not the case. The people in the trial that were on it have stayed on it. And um, the people that have tried it, you know, by by now having a recommendation from the, the clinic have, have stayed on it. Patients having used uh, VitroCup once uh, for, let's say, one month or three months, uh, two years later, restart again on their own. And I have seen them on the controls. So uh, this is quite a good indicator that for the patients, it's becoming a routine um, to use this uh, in several cycles um, and having an interval without any therapy when they are free. And effectively, uh, this is effective for the patients. And this is a very good proof uh, that we can really see something and the patient has a benefit. We have something now that's non-surgical, that's uh, cost-effective, that's safe, um, and it's really, I believe, therefore, um, an exciting time. The key message is the the, the improvement in quality of, of, of life, that, that subjective um, improvement that John was mentioning. I think that that's an important message. You can, you can impact, you can improve a person's quality of life 
by advising them to use uh, vitro caps. I think I think that's that's a big big message. This time last year, I was in Hawaii at a conference, a conference called Oil and Eyes, and I was presenting. And the time difference meant I was up early, running, and went for a swim and got into some difficulty, unfortunately, and almost drowned. I was rescued from the ocean. Um, the net result of that was I actually had um, an incidence of floaters like really, really bad. I was playing tennis um, one morning and came because I like to play tennis. I came back and I was explaining to my wife, Jane, that really, really didn't enjoy that game. I had these floaters and she said, well, you must take your own medicine then. <laughs> so I started. In my case, they went away to the point that they're almost uh, totally gone now. So I have stayed on them. Um, for a full year and I'm interested you know because we say will people stay on them I won't come off them because they were I disliked it so much I would hate that to happen again so I just take them every day because they're you know the micronutrients are not just and we didn't discuss it today and nor should we because we won't have time but they're not just probably helping what's going on in the vitreous you know they're working probably so this is a, um, a a targeted, safe, tested micronutrient that I will make part of um, my supplement uh, usage uh, as I move through my years.